I really overslept this morning. It's Saturday, 1st of June. And because my back's been bad, my sleep's been all over the place. So I let myself deliberately just sleep as long as I wanted to this morning. And it was like 20 to 9. Anyway, so I'm getting organised. Um, I'm going off to do cleaning this morning. Uh, but I also woke up this morning to three sales on my Shopify store. So yay, good things are happening. So I should be packaging that up at the weekend and sending that off first thing Monday morning. Um, I'm hoping to have a, a, a good old bake later. I'm going to do several things in the oven. I'm going to try and make a kind of pasta bake with a cheese topping. And I think I'm going to make... I'm probably going to make a cake. I don't know if it's going to be peach or pineapple. I haven't decided yet, but we'll, um, we'll have a look and see what... what what we're in the mood for it a bit later so I'm going to go and get this cleaning done first and then I'm going to head back and then show you what I'm, I'm making and um, hopefully that'll inspire you catch you later so I'm back and I am going to make a pasta bake I'm going to use the apple pie dish because it's the biggest one I've got and I want to make enough to last two or three meals. I'm going to shove this stuff in it, which has been in the freezer, uh, because why not? What I like about doing dishes like this is that I can put in whatever I bloom I like and it doesn't matter. So, um, I have the pasta. I don't have shaped pasta. I only have straight pasta, so I'm going to break it up into sections. I also have broccoli. I have a cauliflower which I need to use up and the cauliflower leaves which I'm going to chop into it. I have dwarf beans. I have one tomato that is in urgent need of using. Um, I'm going to throw in a sauce just to add to it. Onion sauce mix requires half a pint of semi skim milk which I'm not going to use because milk's a precious commodity. I'm going to do a bit of milk and some water and because it's going to be mixed in like a sauce in a bake I don't think it matters as much I'm also going to put on the top some cheese this is Mexican chili grated I got this as a freebie or a discount on one of my cashback apps I think last year and I used some of the bags I don't normally buy grated cheese so I use some of the bag and put the rest into the freezer and it's perfectly fine this will be fine on the top so I'm going to make this first um, I'm going to soften up my veg in a saucepan of water just to blanch it off just so it's a bit soft so when it bakes in the oven it doesn't come out semi raw and I'm just going to load this up so what I'm going to do first is put the veg raw into the dish let's move you around so you can see what I'm doing I'm going to put it into the dish so I can see that I'm not making too much. So I think I'm going to put in half of the broccoli. Uh, we put everything in to take off the hard bits off the stalk. And then I'm just going to chop it up into suitable sized pieces. cauliflower in the fridge so I think I'm going to do this whole cauliflower because it really needs using chop off the bottom of the root which is a little bit tough and then just start chopping all of this up Too long this one, but the rest of that looks 
probably okay. So I'm going to again just rough chop those up. that the uh, the tips of these beans probably aren't that bad to eat but I've done it just a few like that. and I'm just going to chop these in half and then they can go in now if I add the pasta in when it's cooked and the cheese on top the tomato I will layer on the top before the cheese and the meat I will layer in throughout. So I'm going to get this into a saucepan. I'm going to need a bigger saucepan now. And give this a quick blanch just to soften it up. And that will soften it up and then the, um, the oven baking time will finish it off. So let's put that in there like that. Uh, so that's doing, I'm going to do some pasta. Scrap it in. Break that up into three bits. And then get that going as well. Doesn't matter if that goes cold before. Let's tidy up the things we finish with. Space is on a premium here. Alright, so that can go back in, and that can go back. Right, whilst that is doing, I'm also going to make, I'm not sure what cake to do. Um, I have an open jar of homemade rhubarb jam. And there's a bit left in here. I made this a couple of years ago and it lasts fine. It tastes so good. So what I might do is just do the cake recipe and just mix the jam in it. And that will probably do the job. Because I'd rather use up something that's already open than open something up new. I have a tin of pineapple slices and a tin of sliced peaches. And I also still have some... Um, orange and I think lemon which I canned last year but I think I'm going to leave those as they are and use this because I'm not really using this at the moment because I'm not making bread I'm not really making the things that I would put with jam so I think yeah I think I'm going to use the jam let's get the bake out the way first so let's set up for the onion mix I'm not much of a recipe follower, as you have probably noticed. Uh, empty contents. Right. Yeah, I am not very good at following recipes. I will always look to how can I dumb it down, how can I make it simpler, cheaper, but taste just as nice. So with the sauce... I'm going to put in some milk, like a bit of milk, and then top it up with water as it starts to look like it's a little bit dry. So that's all I have in there. It's not very much. Um, just going to spoon, pop a bit of 
milk in. Give it a good stir. This is going to sit for a minute. I'm going to add a little bit of extra water because it's obviously going to need more than that. I don't want it to be too watery, but I don't want it really, really thick. I need it to get right in amongst the vegetables. So, while those are doing, I'll get this started. It doesn't matter, again, it doesn't matter if it sits and it gets a bit cold, because it's just going to go into a bake. So, I don't know if you can see any of what I'm doing now. Let's move you around. Three pans on the go. That's good. Right, that's done. That can sit. Pass it from overflowing. That onion sauce mix I bought, um, I have a whole stack of those and a few other things as well. And they were on cheap, so they were on the reduced style, and they were desperate to get rid of them, so they were like 10p for a sachet. And they can really turn a meal around if you're looking for flavour, like putting vegetables, a bit of cheese, some pasta, and some um, salami meats on top. It may not be enough flavour, particularly when you're working with budget meals, and you're trying to get as much oomph out of it as possible because you are eating budget so you still want the flavour you still want your kind of taste buds to be excited by what's going on because the problem is that if you eat lots of really bland food you end up just craving something and you'll go down to the supermarket and you'll buy a bar of chocolate or you'll buy a packet of you know, chocolate hobnobs or something and just go mad with it because your your brain's just craving stuff. So I'm trying to do things gradually. Now that the bread's gone or the chocolate's gone, there are very few snacks left in the house. And I'm feeling fine with it at the moment. No problem at the moment. But I still do want that flavour. And it's funny that since I've not had those easy reach snacks, I've started thinking about meal planning a bit more. Because um, normally I just whack in a stir fry, throw in some meat, bit of sauce on it, lunch is done. But now I'm thinking a bit more carefully about how I can use what I've got in stock and turn it into more interesting meals, which will hopefully make the detoxification process of my poor body, which has been deluged by rubbish food for far too long, and will make it easier for me to do what I need to do. So I'm just waiting on the veg, eating some meat. I love salami meat. Pepperoni, oh my god. It makes me want to go to Pizza Hut and eat a massive all you can eat pepperoni pizza. Which I haven't done in about, I think I did it three years ago. I went on a long walk and I ended up about five miles away or an industrial, like a, a retail estate, and there was a pizza hut, and it was, they were doing the all-you-can-eat buffet, and I just went mad, and I think it cost me, I don't know what it was, eight, nine quid, I don't know what it was, it wasn't expensive, and I just sat there for hours just eating myself stupid, there is only so much you can eat, and you always feel like you've come out not having got your money's worth, and it's weird actually, because I was slightly disappointed. The pizza wasn't as I remember pizzas in restaurants being like Pizza Hut. And you think, oh my God, all this deep crust and all that sort of thing. And it's like, 
Uh, and maybe they've dumbed down the recipes over the years. They probably have. And it's the same with all the snack foods. So where I have been eating things like those go-ahead bars I got the other day. They were a pound on the shelf. I got them for 50p. But they were so dull. They were just so dull and uninteresting. And the less rubbishy food you eat, the more you realise how disappointing it actually is. And like the, the, the couple of packets of crisps I've got left, that first one you eat, you get that hit of the flavour. And then after that, it's like... I just find, find it quite dull. Right, I am ready to decant cooked foods into my dish so I'm going to move you round again to watch the rest of this. hope this is giving some inspiration to anyone who doesn't really know where to start but has the capability of just throwing things into a bowl. That's what this is all about. So here we are. Here is my dish. Can you see all of that? Right, first thing I'm going to do is turn that off, get rid of the lid. I'm going to layer in some of the vegetables. So there we have a layer of vegetables. And now I'm going to layer in, whoops, they all escaped. Let's layer in some pepperoni, terrible accent, ignore me. I'm also going to layer in a little bit of the pasta. That will do. Now I'm going to put in, I think, the rest of the vegetables. Right, so all the veggies in. Put the last of the pasta in. for all of them but that's all right we can snack on the rest of that now I am going to just chop my tomato And on the top, just for a bit of added flavour fun. I'll do there. Now I'm going to spoon in my onion sauce. I'm just going to add a little bit of extra water to this because it's a little bit thick and I want it to seep in amongst the vegetables. It'll reheat itself anyway. So I'm just going to put it on the top. As it heats in the oven, it will soften. will push itself down into the veg so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a little bit of help there give it a bit of a stir up there we go that already looks mighty fine 
and all I need to do now is put the cheese on the top. Which has a little bit of spice in it. Not much, because I don't really like spice, but this is fine. I've had this before. And there you have my version of a pasta bake. I'm going to pop this aside for the moment. And pop it aside in the oven. And then we can get on with our cake. Ooh, I just ate a bit of that cheese and that's spicier than I remember. Right, the cake is my usual easy recipe, so I'm just going to tidy up a little bit here. It's a little bit of a mess. Right, so we need a mixing bowl. I'm just going to get the small one today. Margarine out. Let's get the flour out. Uh, I'll whack in some oats like I did last time because I like that. Uh, bicarb, sugar. Right, find the recipe because I can never remember it off by heart because that's the way I am. Right, so. Let's get going. Right, now I'm going to add the rhubarb. I might need to add a little bit more um, water to this, but the jam is quite jammy. So I'm hoping, I don't want to end up with a really sloppy cake. Look at that, throw that in. Oh, that's doing a job. Look at that. This is going to be a very indulgent little cake, I think. I am going to throw in oats. I'll just oomph up the texture a little bit. Whack in a load of them. Right, that's that done. Now I'm going to grease my loaf tin, which I always use for this. In my usual way, which is Marge. do you 
sprinkle in a bit of flour and you knock it around the sides. This is the best way for stopping a cake and then from sticking to the side and then tip the rest of that just into the cake mix because waste not want not. And now I can put my cake mix into my pan. didn't use fingers but the only person eating this is me. I'm going to use my fork just to even it out. And there we are, ready for the oven. Splendid. Also going to throw in one of these dreadful little savers pizzas. I bought a huge stack of these last year. They were 21p and I thought there'll be a good emergency snack for the cupboards. And of course it's ultra processed and it's terrible and I shouldn't be eating it. So I'm just allowing myself, whenever I do a bake in the oven, because these things need to go in the oven, I'm just popping one in and then dicing it up into snacks. That can go in there, oven on a mid heat, and then just wait for things to be cooked. I don't have a timing, let's say 25 minutes. I look at things, I taste things. If they look done, if they taste done, they're probably done. Time to try my pasta bake. Where to start? This is going to be hot. nice. That onion sauce definitely adds to the texture and the flavour and the wetness of the meal. I think it's a bit of an essential. But you could try whatever flavour you liked. I mean you could stick in a bread sauce mix, um, whatever sort of gravy mix you want. It's entirely up to you. Mm. That's a fun lunch. And where the cheese is, there isn't a huge amount, but where the cheese is, it just adds a little tiny kick to it. So that's good fun. Success.
Time to try the cake. <laughs> Putting jam inside a cake makes it really fluffy. Let's see how we get on with this. This is going to be really hot. That really adds an element to it. You can taste the jam, but it's not really sweet. And it's not really gooey. It's like a proper cake. I very much, like when I cook, I'll stick a knife in the cake. If it looks ready, it's done. So this has probably taken a bit longer than the usual 25 minutes. I had everything on a slightly lower heat than normal. Because uh, I was just trying to space things out. But this is so good. Mmm. I hope that's been inspiring. I think that um, some people are quite afraid of home cooking. I've seen these these programs where they try and get people to home cook rather than just buying all their their food ready done to like trying to get them to rebudget better and spend less in the shops. And people just seem terrified of cooking things like they don't know how to cook a potato or you know chop some vegetables and make sauces and things. I just give it a go. I've never been afraid of cooking. Um, I like food. I like it, experimenting with food and exploring food. So I'm not afraid to give something a go and see what happens. Nothing ever turns out so bad that it has to be thrown away. And I would probably make myself eat it even if it wasn't because I cannot stand food waste. Um, it's totally unnecessary in this modern age. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> that bake, I think, is going to probably last about five or six meals. It's, uh, it's deceiving. So I filled up a bowl and there's easily, I would say, enough for another five meals. So that's lunches and dinners um, where I feel like it, all in one go. And that will last several days. Um, you don't have to eat everything at once. Leftovers will often last if you, if you store them properly. And there's nothing in there that's going to go off really. So all good. Hope you enjoyed that.